What's going on, guys? Black Scout Survival. Today we're going to be talking about, or this evening, this is a live video in case you're getting in later. But we're going to be talking about the disaster that happened on uh, I-95 and how you can uh, prepare against this happening to you. If you were have been living under, under a rock the past few days, what has happened <clears throat> is that I-95, there was a tractor trailer, bad snowstorm came through. Tried to trailers, uh, I guess, uh, jackknifed or something, caused a bunch of collisions. People were stranded in their vehicles for 24 hours. And a lot of them ran out of gas. A lot of them didn't have food or water. And so, <clears throat> obviously, very bad situation, right? I think a few people even, even died from it. It was very cold. And, you know, obviously, we're, sur we're a survival channel, so we, you know, obviously try to get you to keep from being a victim, right? So, I, th you know, throughout time, you've seen things like this happen. There was a, a guy and his family, a wife and kids, they got stranded somewhere out west and in a snowstorm. And they weren't going very far, but I mean, they wound up getting stuck overnight somewhere. They had to like light tires on fire to, you know, keep from getting hypothermia. And, uh, like I know my father, when the Atlanta thing happened, he was in Atlanta, living in Atlanta then. And, uh, when the snowstorm hit there and he was just driving to go pick up breakfast and they closed down the roads. And so he was stuck at this restaurant, essentially out, outside of this restaurant for 24 hours. And, uh, you know, he had gear in his truck, luckily, um, and stuff like that. But there was families there that didn't have food. They were, didn't have things, you know, my dad had gave him water and stuff like that. So, um, this could happen to you at any time, you know, how many times you jump in your car with, you know, flip flops on, you're just going to go pick up a call if you're going to go through a drive through or something, you're going to go over to a friend's house real quick, drop something off and you're in flip flops. You're not prepared for anything. And then something happens, right? I've always been a huge proponent of vehicle preparedness over the years. I've got so many videos on it. Um, and the reason why is because bad things typically happen in your house or your vehicle. And usually if you are not at home, your vehicle's usually nearby, you know, so it's kind of like a home base, you know, your house is your, your, you know, your main home base and then your vehicles is, vehicle is also a home base. Right. And that's how I kind of look at it. That's why, you know, we got lots of videos teaching even how to gunfight out of a vehicle because, you know, bad things happen a lot of times while you're in a vehicle. We've got videos on that kind of stuff. If you want to watch it, you know, check it out. But uh, let's kind of just talk about some things, how to stay, uh, you know, prepared in this kind of situation. And give me the thumbs up real quick, if you don't mind. Appreciate it. Um, real quick before we get into this, man, um, uh, one of the subscribers sent me a, he's a fly tire, Brian, um, and he sent me a bunch of hand tied flies for Christmas. I used to tie flies. I don't have time for that anymore, but uh, mine look nothing like as good as Brian's does. So thank you, Brian, for that, man. I appreciate that. I will definitely put them to use and any, any fly tires, um, feel free, feel free to send me some, man. I, I appreciate it. Um, but I want to give Brian a shout out for that. He sent it for Christmas present. Um, so when you're looking at, you know, Obviously, vehicle accidents can happen. You want medical kits, you know, hence why we sell one. And people are always like, well, you're trying to sell. I'm, we're talking about survival. We're a survival company. That's what we focus on. So, yeah, we sell a lot of this stuff. We got medical kits. We sell like this one right here for, you know, bleeding and stuff, keeping your blood in your body, things like that. So, obviously, first aid, medical kits, very, you know, serious um, fire extinguishers, keeping from getting, you know, burning up uh, in your vehicle. Or maybe you're going to be a good Samaritan with the medical kit or the uh, fire extinguisher, save someone else, right? But also look at, like we're talking about the flip-flop thing, warm stuff, right? Like kind of in this situation, people are ill-prepared. Uh, they basically kept their vehicle on all night and ran out of gas trying to stay warm, right? So have clothes and, and have an extra pair of clothes there, right? So let's say you get wet, it's raining or something, you need to change clothes, have an extra pair of clothes in your vehicle, you know, um, warm stuff, you know, jacket maybe, um, hats, gloves, something like some, you know, leather work gloves. These are not my leather work gloves. These are repel gloves, but you can, uh, my work, I have like insulated leather work gloves in my truck, but, uh, 
you know, you can, you can use these two. These actually work pretty well. Um, but, you know, have some kind of leather, heavy duty um, glove, protect your hand and warm insulated stuff, you know, stocking cap, jacket, fleece, wool, whatever. Um, have boots, you're in flip flops. You may have to track, track out on foot. You know, I think people are going to the bathroom is what they said and they didn't have boots. And so they were slipping, falling, you know, getting, getting cold, whatever, have boots, have socks, have, uh, you know, rain suits could be raining, got to change your tire, you know, things like that. But rain suits also work well from if you're already insulated as an outer barrier to protect against wind. So that works well. I've also, thanks Maria. I've also said always about sleeping bags, have them in your vehicle, have them in your home as well. You can keep them in your vehicle because your vehicle is usually always home with you. But for the lowest temperature your area reaches. So if it gets down to, you know, 20 degrees, you know, you want to have a, a sleeping bag that gets down to that. You know, I have bunches of sleeping bags. Uh, I don't even know how I've gotten so many over the years, but a lot of sleeping bags and for other people in your family, you know, and maybe you get a two person one because y'all can get in together, put your kid in there and use body heat to warm up, you know, wool blankets obviously work well because you can hug up and use body heat, you know, but again, running your car all night will run it out of gas and then you're stuck on the interstate like these folks were, you know, kind of talking about just vehicles, for example, four wheel drive. I've always said that over the years. I mean, I'm a, a huge proponent of four wheel drive. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy a, a vehicle that went four wheel drive, you know, um, I see these guys driving around and, and you know, two wheel drive trucks, like you're driving around in a car, man, an El Camino, you can't even call that a truck, right? Um, like these folks, some of them got stuck, carry around a bag of sand. I'm not saying you need to carry around all year, but carry it around if you're going to be going into these type of environments or you live in this type of environments. Bag of sand or non-clumping, cat litter, make sure it's non-clumping. Um, a collapsible shovel, I got E-Tool from Marine Corps, and that's what I carry. So, you know, you can get those, the Gerber works well or the old school that the old school actually works better don't don't even buy, buy the new marine corps stuff by the get the old uh surplus stuff um you know there's snow shovels and stuff like that but i just carry any tool you know put a little bit more work maybe if i was older i may carry a full size but if you're a young guy just carry a tool um toe strap obviously in case you got to get towed out you got to tow someone out you know if you got a four-wheel drive and know how to drive you probably should never need it for yourself, but you may want to be a good Samaritan. Um, all-terrain tires, obviously. Um, you know, whenever I'm buying an outfit in a vehicle, the first thing I do is is put, you know, good all-terrain or off-road tires on it. First first thing I do, um, because tires are so, so important. And then uh, ice scraper, you know, obviously, windshields iced up. Jumper cables, good quality jumper cables. Don't go get the, you know, the, the China Mart, Walmart, one's just like 20 bucks it's you know you got to get heavy gauge uh copper ones you know you're gonna pay you know six if they're not if they're not 60 or more i'm sorry 50 about 50 or more don't waste your money what we're talking about two is vehicle stuff like tools um air uh air you know the um air pump and tire repair stuff I keep one of those kits in there. I had my kit, the the tire pump I got is the uh, green, I think slime or whatever it is, the green slime one. And I actually had a full flat in my Jeep one day. I'm talking about it was sitting on the rim and I repaired the tire and blew it all the way up to, to, to get out. And it worked totally fine. And all, all I did was put a patch in it. You know, I, I didn't even use the, the slime stuff. I just put a patch in it and filled it all the way up with the pump from a, a flat. Now, what I did was, and this is just maybe some information for you, put it on a jack. So as you're filling it, you jack it up because the weight of the truck will, you know, keep it from inflate or keep, keep it because the pump, it'll outweigh the pump. So jack it up as you're filling it up, right? Yeah, make a list, guys. Yeah, the slime, the slime stuff is, is incredible. It, it truly is. I, I love their stuff. Um, I put a, I put one in my wife. So everything that I have too, and if you're, if you're a guy, you know, 
I still believe in in the old way of life, not this new woke stuff. So if you, if you're the man, you need to make sure your your wife and your your children after driving has the same kind of equipment, not just outfit your vehicle, right? And and get them familiarized with it. Don't just put it in there. They don't know what they're doing, right? Um, water. These people ran out of water. Um, have water bottles in your vehicle now. Obviously, you know the the BPA thing, the cancer thing. I think it, you know hot water bottles causes breast cancer or something in women where they say so you know you can do a, a multitude of things you know they have water bags all, all kinds of different stuff but um have have water maybe have a way to purify water you know um but i, I would say just to cure it because not everything is zombie apocalypse something like this where you're not you know going to go forage off the land you're just in your vehicle stuck on the interstate um you can melt snow, obviously, um, but I don't know. I would want to do that on interstate because all the, you know, diesel fuel and stuff like that and oil. But carry water, you know, especially in cold months, it's, it's fine, you know. Um, yeah, water bottles will freeze. They will, but they'll also warm up. You can warm them up. Because I, when we were out in Montana, you know, our bottles will freeze, but we'd, we'd warm them up too, put hand warmers and stuff in them. Um, or crank up your car just for a little bit just to warm your water up. My family, we always carry water bottles all the time. We always have water with us. Even my little girl, she's three. She walks around with a water bottle everywhere she goes, in, anywhere, even in the house. Teach your family to always carry water bottles. Anytime they're going out of the house, carry a full water bottle all the time. Because, I mean, even if this is full, this is going to last me a whole day. I mean, is it ideal? I'm not doing a lot of work. I'm just sitting in my vehicle, but it'll last me all day. You know, yeah. Squeeze filtration, um, water shawls in that kind of stuff, you know, but carry water, right? Moving on. Let's talk about food. Food's next, right? Non-perishable food. I mean, this could be jars of peanut butter. This could be, uh, coconut oil. This could be, um, granola bar, stuff like that. You can put in your vehicle, obviously temperature wise, it could melt, Something I like, I've talked about before, a company called Nutrient Survival. So this is, they've got a new thing called a Jumpstart Kit. I'm going to do a complete video on it because it's actually pretty amazing. So what I like about this company, let me first jump into this. One, maybe you're new here, but uh, new to the channel, you haven't been around here, here a while, but we still a lot of gear reviews a long time ago. We don't really do many gear reviews anymore because now we only really deal with people we truly like. We know they're not, they're not communist and supporting communism and all that kind of stuff. So we vet everyone now and we genuinely only do, we only promote things that we genuinely use. So, um, you know, I bought tons of food before from various companies. Obviously they're very high in carbs and, and just, just the macro table is um, just terrible. The other thing is I've always recommended make, uh, buying canned foods and doing a rotation in your pantry and stuff like that. That way you're buying stuff you actually eat instead of, you know, I got a 55 gallon uh, drum of rice. It's never going to, you know, get eaten. Um, buy stuff you're going to eat. So they actually are coming, they come out, they've come out with, it's, they're on, on their website now, a 14 day jumpstart kit. So this is actually something that, that I like about them is that their food is like stuff you eat now and it will last um, you know, like 15 year shelf life for this, but it's stuff you eat now, right? So they have, uh, oatmeals, lasagna. I mean, all kinds of foods. Um, this is like a protein shake. So, you know, 24 grams protein, um, 18 grams carbs, four grams fast. Great breakdown. The jumpstart kit, you can essentially, I guess, you know, coming into the new year, you buy that kit, eat that you're going to be eating healthy you know, in good tasting food, not stuff that tastes like, you know, chicken, rice, and broccoli. But anyhow, you keep this in your vehicle, mix it with your water, there's some food. Um, right now with the Jumpstart kit, and it comes with a whole box of different things. And like I said, we'll do a complete video on it, I think next week. Um, but right now, if you get it, a bonus are giving these peanut butter, if you can see that, peanut butter um, bar meals. A lot of protein, a lot of carbs um 18 months shelf life so this is something you can eat now you can take it to work eat it and stuff like that and you put it in your vehicle okay and it's got vitamins and stuff like that they have vitamin coffees like in packets 
all these sort of things. So if you are like even cleansing your water, you throw that in your drink. So if you're using like tablets, like chlorine tablets, it's going to kill that uh, taste, that, that funky flavor. I'll put a code for this 10% uh, discount below. I think I think the code's Black Scout 10, I think. So anyway, but if you go check that out, um, pick it up. It's good stuff. It's what I recommend. It's what I carry. It's what I use. Like I'm, I'm to the point now that I only will recommend things that I actually use. And most of the time, these are things that I, I purchased and then I start promoting. Um, so it's kind of like my, my night vision. When I bought it from the guy, he had no idea who I was. I didn't say that, you know, hey, I'm, I'm freaking YouTuber. You know, I just bought it. And that's called him. I said, Hey man, you mind if I, you know, you gave me such a great, you know, customer service. Can I uh, give me your name and number, you know, cause you treated me so well. So that's how, you know, we do things from now on out. So great food. I'm actually, I plan on probably doing this, um, eating their food completely like, you know, to, uh, get that jump start for the new year. So, uh, that's what I recommend. You can go get, tuna packs all you want, you know, but stuff that's going to, you know, not going to melt in your car, freeze in your car, stuff like that. So, uh, non-perishable food, cash, obviously nobody carries cash anymore, but what if you need to barter on the side of the road? Hey man, you got some food. Here's 10 bucks, you know, cash, flashlights and headlamps, headlamps in case you got to work on something. Um, flashlight, where's my flashlight at? Flashlight to see, right? Black Scout flashlight, this bad boy, USB chargeable, rechargeable. So a lot of people carry extra batteries. No, I just take mine and plug it right into the USB charger in my vehicle and charge it up. I have one of these that just sits in my vehicle charging all the time. So if I got to grab and, and, and smash a communist in the face, it's there, you know, um, or I got to break out of my window, you know, you know, hit my window and shatter and get out and, and those sort of things. Always keep, you know, your gas above the halfway mark. A lot of these people got out on the interstate, had a quarter tank gas. And what do you know, it's just freezing. They're in, you know, flip flops and got to keep my car on to stay warm and you're screwed. You know, you run out of gas and then what do you do? Right. You can also take, um, a paint can, right? An empty paint can. Take a big candle and put it inside. So obviously you're not burning something up, but it will create a like a heater, space heater. You know, you have to be very careful to flame, you know, but keep your car if you gotta turn your car off, you've got it in a in a paint can, so it's not gonna set something on fire. So it's deep down inside, but it will create a heater in your car, you know. And you can insulate the windows with blankets or something like that and create like a microclimate. Uh, in your car so you don't have to run and use your gas, you know. Bathroom supplies is something nobody thinks about. Paper towels, toilet paper, bags. Um, we actually had these awesome things. Uh, I don't even know what they're called. <laughs> but we have one in each car, and it's like a small toilet for my little, little girl, and it folds out as a bag. Google it, just say uh, infant's toilet. Thing is, a uh, man can use the bath bathroom in, in there too. Um, so you're not going to, you know, walk across the interstate and there's a hundred cars out there watching you on the side of the road, especially if you're a female. So, uh, check those out. It's a great piece of equipment. Obviously you have infants, diapers, formula, carry extra of all that. You know, most, most mothers do anyway. It's not really something you need to tell them. They, they do it anyway, but you know, look out for your kid and toys, something to keep them occupied. Could you imagine being in a, in a, in a car with a toddler freezing for 24 hours? It's, it's, it's going to be a nightmare you know, um, have toys for them, something for them to do. Always recommend that if you have a bug out bag, whatever, same thing, always keep, you know, stuff to keep them occupied. Um, you know, then you're talking about bug out bags and stuff like that. A lot of people carry a lot of just nonsense stuff. Like I see guys talking about their car kits on video sometimes. And like, if they'd been in this situation, they'd been screwed. I mean, if they were going to go survive out in the wilderness, they'd been fine. You know, most of the time, like I always say, like carry a small dedicated kit, like something like we sell here. This will take care of your survival needs if you get in a legitimate survival situation. But this other stuff, sleeping bags and um, water, food, stuff like that, stuff that you can, you know, cash, stuff that you can have at that point in time that you're not having to go live off the land. You know, also the other day when we did a video on this, these like went out of 
uh, stock for some reason on our website, but they're not out of stock. We fixed it. They're in stock. So um, those are in there on, on site now if you want to check those out. But the, the candle and the paint can, you can just try it at home, check it out. Um, and, and just like maybe get in your bathroom and try it and just see what kind of heat it creates um, in a small space like that. But I would say, you know, obviously take notes. Mark Fowler, thank you, sir. I would say, you know, take notes. If you just jumping into this video, go back, just take some notes and, you know, write these things out. Obviously, two when we're talking about first aid, something I forgot, failed to mention, is that carry extra medications for whatever you take. And we, we actually also, I spoke with a company that has a incredible kit of antibiotics um, that they're coming out with that you can get and keep on you like in your kit. And I spoke to them last week. So maybe in a few weeks, we're going to talk about that. Incredible. So having things like that, but ha you know, cause a lot of people use fish antibiotics and, and they're hard to even get now. So this is something that you can get and you have a like manual that basically tells you what to take for what, but if you like, you know, have heart meds, diabetes meds, you know, whatever, any kind of critical medical condition, always carry extra meds. Cause let's say you have, you know, meds that you have to take every so, so many hours and then 24 hour time, maybe a four to eight hour time period. And you don't have those meds, you know, it could be life threatening. So, um, someone is asking what exactly we're talking about. We're talking about the I-95 where uh, hundreds of vehicles are stuck on the road for over 24 hours because of a uh, tractor trailer jackknife and caused a bunch of accidents. And these people are freezing and ran out of fuel, no food and water. I mean, they were literally thrust, in, thrust into a survival situation. There's probably people just going to work that were thrust into a little survival situation for, you know, 24 hours. And there was no way people could even get to these people to help them. There was no way for them to get the food. There's no way. Actually, people like left their vehicle and started walking. And let's say you, you had to do that. You had an aunt for you, have someone have a medical condition, what have you. Do you have boots? Do you have boots for your, you know, if it, yeah, you might have boots, but your wife and your kids in there and, you know, they're wearing flip flops. What are you going to do? You know, they're wearing, how many times do you see people go on road trips and they're wearing essentially pajamas, sleeping while other people are driving? You get stuck on the interstate. Obviously, defense, all that kind of stuff. Um, Self-defense, because there's always opportunists that, you know, take advantage of situations, criminal opportunists, um, those sort of things as well. Yeah, massive pileup in Kentucky. It stretched over, you know, tons of miles. Yeah, four by four. I uh, said that in earlier in the video. I, I would never buy a vehicle without being uh, four wheel drive. I mean, we, me, when my wife and I first started dating, and you know, I was talking about, or I think when we first got married, and I was, you know, looking at getting a new vehicle, and I was, and she was like telling me, you know, sending me some like links to some vehicles, and I'm like, but that's not four wheel drive. And she's like, well, why do you need four wheel drive? I'm not even going to explain it to you. I need four wheel drive. Like that is a, a necessary thing. And any women that are watching, giving their men a hard time about four wheel drive, trust me, there's going to come a situation that you're going to be glad they have it. So um, someone is saying here about uh, extra clothes and blankets about where you can get them from veteran stand downs. They give out sea bags full of good stuff, poncho, sleeping bag, liners, and clothes. That's true. And if you're on a budget, man, go to the Salvation Army, pick up. There's a lot of times you can find good things in there. Um, or whatever, whatever uh, not the Salvation Army, excuse me. Um, what is it? Goodwill. Don't go to Salvation Army. Don't support them. <laughs> Goodwill or thrift store, whatever. Um, thrift store, you can find good stuff, cheap, extra clothing that you're going to keep in your truck. Because I understand a lot of people, when I've said this, like, well, I don't want to put clothes in my vehicle, you know. And they just stay there or well, you can go buy something, you know, from a thrift store and put in there. Yeah. So all wheel drive, this guy saying his wife, um, she bought a all wheel drive. Exactly. Great. Um, Subarus are phenomenal. They have won so many off road competitions. Solar chargers, obviously another good thing to have in your vehicle. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it is. Yeah, all wheel drive is not as good as, as a four wheel drive, but it's better than a two wheel drive. Is it smarter to leave in your truck or have a dedicated bag to take every day? I would leave this stuff in my vehicle. Let's say you're running out of the house because you're late for work or you're late for whatever, or you just forget to put it back in there. Just have this stuff. You know, you can get thrift store stuff. You can get, they have tons of jackets and, and winter clothing in there. I mean, I've given so much myself to these kind of places. So um, you can get that kind of stuff. The food and the water is easy. I mean, this is, this stuff is a uh, quick fix like you buy it tonight and it's going to be at your house in a few days and you're going to have a ton of food and you can this is i think it comes with like eight bags look it up on the link it's like eight bags of stuff so you can spread everything out you can open it up ration out whatever and and spread it out put in your wife's car your your car your kid's car um Trash bags is also a good alternative. I'm not sure if I said that, but if, you know, for, uh, you know, having to go to the restroom um, and that kitty litter that you use for the tires can also work in the trash bag. We're going to do a dedicated video on that here. And I think next week we're going to film it for relieving yourself. So just wait for that. We'll do a short. If you're not watching the shorts, you better be watching the shorts, man. Every Wednesday, uh, Afternoon, we put out a short, which is a 60 second survival training video covering all subject matter. If you hadn't, just go watch all of our shorts, go through the playlist of shorts and just watch all of them. Um, and it's not even going to take you up, you know, 20 minutes of your time, and you've learned so much stuff. Someone says, I'm breaking up real bad, is probably the communists trying to uh, mess me up. Someone also said, you know, learn how to use a four wheel drive. Absolutely agree with that. A lot of people have four wheel drive. They don't know how to use it. Um, knowing how to use it. You can watch a lot of videos and stuff like that. Um, baby wipes. Excellent. Someone recommended that as well. Baby wipes are good for, you know, you have to use the potty and especially if you, if you got a kid is you already have them. So, um, the, the problem is, um, the baby wipes will, you have to change them regularly because in a hot vehicle, they, they will, it'll, it'll evaporate even in sealed. I don't know how that happens. That also happens with Neosporin. So if you keep a medical kit in your vehicle and you have Neosporin in there, somehow it escapes. I, I don't know. It evaporates. Yeah, vehicle prep, this gentleman is saying that he's taking vehicle prep more seriously after watching this video. Um, yes, vehicle prep is one of the biggest things that I talk about, like over the years. It's like one of the, there's a few things that I harp on. Vehicle prep, right? Vehicle preparedness. Because a lot of people dream that they're like running off in the woods with a backpack. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that'll happen. Vehicle prep, number one. Home security, number two. Flashlights, because I can carry a flashlight pretty much anywhere in, in the world. I can't carry a gun and a knife everywhere, but I can always carry this, and I can always hit somebody in the face with this. I want to tell you that, like, they didn't come to me to make the flashlight. Like, I had had this flashlight design in my mind for, like, 15 years, and I just found them to make it for me. You know, I talked to a lot of companies. And I decided to work with them because of the, the craftsmanship for the cost ratio. My plan for like this, for example, was not to get rich. It was to outfit many people with something, you know. So the margins are, are crap, to be honest with you. I just want to make sure that everybody had something that I've always wanted. You know, you can't carry a gun or a knife everywhere, but you can carry a flashlight. So that's why flashlights also another thing I'm very serious about. Um, you know, firearms, self-defense from a vehicle, these sort of things, combatives. I'm, I'm very serious about certain things because whenever I think about real world scenarios or real world, world situations, I just don't see, you know, bushcraft and, 
you know, in, in the wilderness, you know, making freaking Swedish stoves, uh, you know, carving spoons. I just don't see that ever being, a, a, I'm not going to go have to flint nap a freaking arrowhead. There's metal that will be here for the rest of eternity that if I needed to make an arrowhead, I can make it out of metal, right? So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, never leave your keys in your vehicle. Um, people, people will jump in and take it. All right, guys. So this has been about 30 minutes. Um, I think I pretty much covered everything. We have dedicated uh, videos where I actually show the vehicle and show equipment um, and even so much just so as uh, bug out stuff, you know, things like that. Um, vehicle preparedness, vehicle self-defense, just you can type in that and, and spend hours watching those type of videos we've done over the years. And then obviously the shorts, ton of information. Again, Black Scout 10, I'll put the link below for this jumpstart kit. Um, like I said, I'll do a dedicated video about it next week. But I think, I don't know how long it is. I mean, I hadn't talked to these people uh, lately, but you do get this on their, it's on their website. I live on the website and saw it there that you get these free. So anyhow, guys, I do appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight, man. I know the late nights is a struggle for some people, but I do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Um, give me a thumbs up, please. And uh, make sure you comment. Let me know where you're viewing from or if you have any recommendations for vehicle stuff that I may have missed um, or any, any just general advice. Oh, yeah, too. I'm wearing this hat. Uh, people have been asking me for this, but because of the supply chain issue, we've not had these hats for an entire, I think, year and a half. They're back in stock now. So. All the tactical hats are their uh, Velcro front, Black Scout logo, Amer American made, made here in Ohio, right? Soft. It's not the structure cap because a lot of people don't like truckers. So it's not a trucker. Uh, Multicam on site now. So, Kathy, thank you. Always appreciate you too. Appreciate all you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me. If you're watching tonight, you're going to bed. Have a great night's sleep. You're at work. Don't work too hard. And if you're going to work tomorrow watching this, um, it's Friday. So um, you're about to have the weekend off. Anyhow, guys, as always, appreciate your guys' support and take care. And have a good weekend.